why would you buy an HTC? Back in 2014 this question had an obvious answer. HTC made awesome phones. Since then, well, let's just say the last four years haven't been all that kind. Like a YouTuber who never seems to get a viral break, HTC hasn't come up a smash hit to compete with Apple and Samsung since the HTC One M8. The HTC U12 Plus has a crack at luring us back in with some unusual features like haptic buttons and HTC favorite squeezy sides. These are unlikely to turn HTC's luck around, not with the lower price OnePlus 6 out to court Apple and Samsung haters. However if you're a notch hater, this phone doesn't have one. And aside from disappointing battery life the HTC U12 Plus is well worthy of consideration. A quick look at the HTC U12 Plus S back makes it seem similar to the other high-end phones you can buy today. Its rear is glass, and so shiny you can use it to check your hair on the way to work. There are a couple of important standouts to note, though. The HTC U12 Plus does not have a notch. LG, QI, OnePlus and Honor have all been sucked in by this design trend, but here HTC has stuck with a normal rectangular screen. It's the longer 89 kind though, so it doesn't look dated. Still, the display doesn't push to the edges as much as a Galaxy S9 Plus or OnePlus 6, so you get slightly less screen inches per inch of phone than some. The HTC U12 Plus also feels fairly large, and at 8.7mm thick isn't super thin. A rectangular brick of phone as thick would usually feel flat out chunky. But the curved liquid glass on the back avoids this. The HTC U12 Plus is big then, but still feels good. You can also get the HTC U12 Plus with an unusual translucent finish that reveals the gubbins hidden under the surface. As you can see, HTC sent us the standard silvery metallic version. Phone makers currently experiment with all kinds of glassy finishes, and you might like this one if you think the Honor 10 looks like someone wrapped it in metallic wrapping paper. Pressure-sensitive sides are what really set the HTC U12 Plus apart from the rest. The HTC U11 had these too. You can squeeze the phone to start the camera, wake the Google Assistant or launch an app. HTC calls it Edge Sense. One obvious issue is that unless you set it to require quite a firm squeeze you're likely to set it off accidentally. Even normal hand pressure can start off the Edge Sense animations unless you calibrate it properly. HTC has taken the Edge Sense tech a step further here too. Look at the HTC U12 Plus's buttons. Seem normal, don't they? Look a little closer and you'll soon realize that they aren't though. Rather pressing down, they simply sense the pressure of your finger and then set off a haptic pop to simulate the feel of pressing a clicky button. A bit like Apple's home button. The HTC U12 Plus screen compares pretty well with the top contenders. Despite using an LCD screen rather than an OLED, it's a 6-inch 18.9, 2880 x 1440 pixel display with higher pixel density than the OnePlus 6. Screen snobs will find its colors oversaturated at the default settings, and the color temperature a little cool. However, you can change this. Head to settings and you'll find the purists sRGB mode and temperature sliders. Switching to sRGB makes the HTC U12 Plus look more grown up. And like switching from drinking coke to green tea, you can smugly tell people about it. If you're that kind of person. The HTC U12 Plus runs Android 8.0.0 and, like all HTCs, the Sense interface. Its basics are similar to those of normal Android. You can jump over to the apps menu with an upward swipe and it's mostly clean looking. HTC is still keen for us to use HTC Sense home screen, though. This is a feed of news and social updates that sits to the left of your standard home screen. The HTC U12 Plus's general performance is also excellent because it has one of the fastest mobile processors in the world right now. It's the Snapdragon 845, an octa-core CPU that earns the phone a Galaxy S9 matching 8825 points in Geekbench 4. Android feels smooth, games like PUBG run at top graphics settings and during testing, the phone hasn't crashed or stuttered once. It's over with the camera that I find the only performance issue worth complaining about. The HTC U12 Plus suffers from a little shutter lag. You want to feel a phone takes a photo as soon as you hit the shutter button, but there's a half-second lag here. There's otherwise a lot to like about the U12 Plus S camera, 
Though, on the back you get a 12 megapixel main sensor with optical image stabilization and an f/1.8 lens, plus a 2 by zoom 16 megapixel sensor with a slower f/2.6 lens. Taking the HTC 12 Plus to shoot out on the park was a reminder of how useful a zoom can be, letting you compose shots that just aren't possible with the standard 27 mm ish view. The HTC 12 Plus also has superbly effective HDR processing. This is where a phone uses multiple blended exposures to bring out more detail in scenes where there's a big difference between the darkest and brightest areas. It does aim for impact, though, occasionally blowing out highlights to make sure shadow areas look clear and bright. However, switch to the manual mode and you can capture raw DNG files and get the best of both with an application like Photoshop. Some of the results we've squeezed out of the HTC the HTC 12 Plus are seriously impressive. Night photos are good too, although they don't quite match either the OnePlus 6 or Galaxy S9. Aside from the HTC 12 Plus S weird non-moving buttons and the just OK screen brightness, all complaints so far have been issues most can handle. However, its battery may test your patience. The HTC 12 Plus has a 3500 mAh battery that sounds decent with 200 mAh more than the OnePlus 6 however, in reality stamina is only just passable. Draining the HTC 12 Plus in a day is a cinch. Just a few hours of podcast streaming and some photo capture sees the battery drain almost to nothing before bedtime. It's a head scratcher. The HTC 12 Plus doesn't have an ultra bright 1000 nit screen and all its innards are up to date but it seems to fall away short of the best. This is a phone you'll need to charge every day. The HTC 12 Plus was a chance for HTC to tell us what its vision of Android is. What did we get? Pressure sensing quirks that don't necessarily seem much better than what we had before. Add just passable battery life and the HTC 12 Plus doesn't get close to rivaling the Galaxy S9 or, more importantly, the cheaper OnePlus 6. However if you like HTC style, a great camera, loads of power and high quality builds still make it a solid choice. And while it may not be as great value as a OnePlus 6, it's still a lot cheaper than a Huawei P20 Pro or iPhone X.